welcome to my channel let's start the tutorial delete the default cube first sorry mr default cube <laughs> now we have to add a simple plane no 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 i was not talking about this plane <laughs> press shift a and click on this plane currently we are working in the object mode and we have to edit something in our plane so press tab now you can see we are in edit mode we also need the edge selection tool so press 2 remember not from the number pad select one of the edges of this cube i have selected this one press e y and 2 and now we need one more like this here so just repeat the process or you can just press shift r to repeat the previous process now select the other edge press e x negative 2 this time we have typed negative 2 2 is for the size and negative is for the direction on this x axis this is the positive direction and this is the negative direction now select this edge press e x and 2 this is the turn of the last edge select it and press e x and minus 2 the base structure of our box is ready now we have to add some bones to our unwrapped box go back to object mode by pressing tab shift a and select a single bone from the armatures list now we got our single bone but don't worry this will be no more single <laughs> We will add some more bones here but before that we have to resize the bone. Press S to scale and 2 for the size. Now the size of the bone and height and width of the box are same. Select the little ball of this bone. Press E, Y and 2. Now we have to separate these bones. Select the upper bone and press Alt P and simply disconnect the bone. Now we can move the bone and both bones will still be connected like long distance relationship. Now we need to move this bone, press G, Y and 1. Now we need one another bone just after this bone. Select the right ball of this bone and press E, Y and 2. Now we need three more bones for the rest of the sides. Select the first bone's upper ball and press E, X and 2. Now again we have to disconnect this bone. We also had the option to duplicate the previous bone that we have created like this. But I forgot to do that. But now we are going to duplicate this bone two more times. And then we will rotate this 90 degrees on the Z axis. But before that we have to change the pivot point to 3D cursor. Press period button and select 3D cursor. Now we can rotate this on the Z axis. Because our 3D cursor is in the center and if yours not, then press shift C to get back the 3D cursor on its previous position or starting position whatever you say. Now just press shift R and it will automatically repeat the previous process as I said before. Select all the bones that are hanging in the air because we have to place these in a right place. Press G, Z and negative 2. Now all the bones have been perfectly placed. This is the renaming time. Press 7 for the top view. Select the bones one by one and rename all of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and lastly our first bone mother bone now we need to go back in the object mode press tab select the box and then the bone press ctrl p and click on with empty groups now our bone you can say r measure is now the parent of our box we have to assign all the six bones to the six faces of our box to do that thing we need to select the box that is already selected go to edit mode and in the object data properties we will assign every bone to every part of our box press 7 to easily recognize our renamed bones turn the face selection mode on and select the first face of our box and assign it to the first bone select this face of the box and assign it to the second bone and so on just repeat 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 and now the last one the mother bone we have assigned all the bones to our object go to object mode select the armature and now we are going to work in pose mode so control plus tab we are going to close our box by rotating our bones but we just can't do this because our pivot point is on 3D cursor. We need to set our pivot point from 3D cursor to median point. Press period button again and select median point. Now we can rotate it properly and I will going to rotate this on the X axis by 90 degrees. I'm also going to repeat this for the upper bone. Press R, X and 90. Now this is the turn for the other dose of this box. Press R, Y, 90. Okay, negative. Put the negative sign before the number or after it. Both work the same. Now one by one close all the doors of this box. Press R, X, 90, negative. This is the turn for the last one. Press R, Y, 90. Our box is now closed and ready to unwrap. Press Ctrl Tab again to get out of this pose mode. Select the box and go to modifier properties. We will add a solidify modifier to our box to make it thick. And now our box has got some thickness. I would like to turn the even thickness on and I will adjust the thickness and 
the last thing I will change the offset from negative to positive. Now this is the time for some texture work. In the edit mode with the whole box selected press U and click on unwrap. Our box is unwrapped and ready to add some textures. For the texture work we will go to the shading workspace, add a new material to our object and as usual we will rename it. I would like to add a paper material to our box and we have to download it first. Open your browser, go to ambientcc.com, click on materials and search for the paper texture and download it. We are going to use this for our box. Now go to edit preferences and search for the node wrangler add-on. Make sure it is checked and close it. Click on this principal BSDF and shift control and T. Choose the downloaded texture and click on this princi <laughs> principal texture setup. Okay, okay, okay. I am in rendered view. It will look more better when we add a plain surface and of course we need better lighting. Let's get back to our layout workspace and I think we should animate the box now. Select the bone in object mode and press control tab to go to the pose mode. Select all the bones by pressing A, press I and click on rotation. Now I'm going to open the first door of the box and I want to go about keyframe 34 and now I will rotate the door 90 degrees on X axis. I think I have done something wrong. Okay, we had enter minus 90 and 90 minus. No problem, we have control Z, press R, X 90. So we had done something like that but this time we will add minus after 90 this is time to insert the another keyframe press i and click on rotation let's see how will it move great now we will open all the doors select the lower bone and rotate it 90 or negative 90 on the axis of x but before this i will change the keyframe a bit because i don't want the motion to be uniform press r x 90 minus 90 okay now again we have to add a keyframe press i and click on rotation i want to see the animation where we have created very nice looking animation now this is the time for rest of the bone and we are going to repeat the same process adjust the keyframe a bit select the bone i think i should increase the speed a bit just rotate it on the desired axis and enter 90 if it works then good but if it doesn't work then simply press minus and after that press i to insert the keyframe and click on rotation then ta -da! set the end keyframe as 40 because our last keyframe is 40 we need to go back to object mode i need an empty cube or something that can control the whole box at a time because we also have to rotate the whole box while it's opening to do this we need something that can control both the bone and also the box now press shift a and add a cube from the list of empty i'm going to adjust the size and location of this empty this will be fine now right click to adjust the size and scale it up a bit i want to rename this empty press f2 and rename select the box and rename it as well select the armature and then select the box controller and press ctrl p and then object let me explain what we have done here here we have three things a box and armature and an empty. The armature is controlling the box because we have parented the box to our armature and we have parented the armature to the empty. Now the box is the child of our armature and also the empty and the armature is the parent of the box and child of the empty and lastly the empty is the parent of the box as well as the armature. It means the empty can control both the armature and also the box. So this is working pretty well. Now we can animate our last part. Okay select the box controller and press I on first frame. Go to the last keyframe frame number 40. Now we are going to rotate the box controller 360 degrees on the X of z insert the rotation keyframe and now let's play the animation now we have done all the animation parts and it's time to add surface and lights i would like to add a plane press s for scale and f2 to rename it i would also like to delete this default light i'm really very sorry mr default light but i had to do that thing now i'm going to duplicate this plane press shift d and z to grab it on the z-axis. Now I'm going to scale it down on the x-axis. Again a little bit. Now I'm going to grab it. This will be our main light source by the way. And I want to add an array modifier to this object. I'll increase the count to 5. And I want all these in negative direction on the x-axis. I'll also increase the distance. Now it looks good. Let me take a look from the top. I'll move it just a bit on the left side, it's fine and looks great for me. Now I'll add some material to our new object, it's not compulsory to rename all the things but it's a good practice to avoid confusions in a bigger project. I just changed the principal BSDF surface to emission surface and I also want to increase the strength. Uh, I have chosen emission surface because I want to use that object as the light source. Now I should choose a better camera angle. I think this would be a good camera angle. It's time to work on our surface area. Select the surface, click on new in material properties and rename it. I would like to go to the render view for better vision.
Now I'm going to choose the surface color. Okay, this looks good for me. Maybe a bit darker. Let me take a closer look of this box. We have to get rid of these sharp edges. I'm going to select this box and I will apply bevel modifier to our box. Bevel, 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 bevel. You can clearly see the difference. I'll increase the segment and uh, it looks better. Where are my lights? I forgot to rename this. O I G H D S lights. I think I should adjust the lighting strength a bit. You can also select the objects from here. Just right click on any object and click on select and it will be selected. Where are my material properties? I'm just trying to figure out which lighting strength would work with our box or our scene in our scene. One more thing that I don't like is the world light. I don't hate it in every situation but sometimes. Now I'm going back in solid mode because our work has not done yet. Our light is falling straight from the upside and I want it to come from one side. It can be left or right. We also need to rotate it. I think I should move it to the left side. I also had to rotate this again. Perfect. Now let me see the rendered shot. Okay, now it looks more cinematic. Let me adjust the strength again. We also have some work on our surface. Flip the surface and scale it up. I think this would work well. By the way, we should not do this in rendered view. So we will work in solid view. Otherwise, there will be more stress on our CPU. Surface is selected. Press tab for edit mode. Press 2, not from the number pad. Select these two edges and extrude them on Z axis. Now I'm going to hide everything instead of this surface. Press slash and see magic. When I said magic, it sounds more like a curse than a magic. <laughs> Add a loop cut here and one here, one more and one last year. Now I need face selection mode, press 3, not from the number pad and I will select this face and extrude it out a bit. By the way, this will be our backlight. Now scale it down a bit, press I and inset a bit, press E and extrude inside. We have to add another material to this because this will be a backlight and don't forget to assign it. Here we are going to choose our favorite backlight color. And after that, the most important thing that we have done with our key light, we will choose emission from the surface list and increase the strength a bit. Press slash again and get everything back. This is showtime. Go to render view. Oh, our backlight is still white. But how? Okay, when I have changed the surface, the color automatically reset. No problem, I will set it back. Okay, I'm just figuring out which color and which strength should be good for this. Now it looks better uh one more thing i want to do with our backlight the edges are too sharp and i don't like it so i will add double bevel bevel as before looks better now okay let me see what we can adjust here i'll add an extra segment and reduce the amount i think i need more key light in the background let me adjust the strength of our backlight Okay, go back to solid mode, click on render properties, set the max samples to 100 and we'll increase the contrast from here. Click on this look and select very high contrast. You can see the difference. Now go to output properties and select the file format and output location. Go to solid mode again, press control at 12. You could also change the resolution, but I'm going with the default one, 1080 into 9020. And I chose JPEG as file format. I will combine all of them in DaVinci Resolve in just few seconds. You can save the file before closing the blender. Now close the blender, open DaVinci Resolve and also open the folder that has our JPEG files. Select all of these JPEGs and drag these into our timeline. Click on this deliver workspace and select the location, file format, file name and click on add render queue. And finally on render all. Dun, 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 dun. Thanks for watching.